Hi everybody, today I'd like to talk to you about anxiety in children um, at this time um, related to COVID-19. So as adults, we're experiencing some significant anxiety and uncertainty around the virus and the information that's circulating um, in these uncertain times, and of course the measures that have been put in place. Um, so as ch for children, they're also experiencing anxiety, confusion, disruption, um, to their usual routine, no school, etc. Uh, so that's what I'd like to spend a little bit of time focusing on today. Um, with regards to the COVID-19 virus and what that brings up for children, what I'm noticing and, and what I'm hearing other parents um, talk about in relation to their children is that there is a certain amount of anxiety amongst their children. Um, there's fear, there's confusion, um, they're listening to adult conversations, they're at home, obviously, at the moment, as we all are, so they're um, perhaps more exposed to adult conversations than they would previously be. They're um, maybe picking up and feeding off some of our adult anxiety, which um, is very prevalent also. So it's just really to be aware and mindful that our children are, are feeling uncertain and feeling a little bit afraid at this time as well. So what can we do to help with that? Um, what can we do to um, help alleviate some of that anxiety and dispel any of the misinformation that they may be um, ex have been exposed to? So the very first thing that we can do as parents um, is listen. Uh, listen to what our children are worried about, what they're afraid of. Um, listen to what they have to say about this. Um, when we're listening, pay attention to the body, pay attention to their body language, to the expressions that they're making, um, and, 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 and use that information to guide you in, in terms of their emotional world, and use that information to help you understand how they might be feeling as well. It's really, really important that we answer questions that our children have um, at this time. The only way to help them understand what's going on is to meet them at their level or around this. So to speak to them in child-friendly language, keep it simple, um, keep it light, but keep it real. Tell them the truth, tell them the facts, but obviously in a way that's digestible to them. And you will know your child and what they can and can't handle um, around the information. But they will need to know why they're being kept home from school, what might happen, um, and the measures that are being put in place and why they're being put in place. So they naturally, because children are so curious anyway, they naturally will have questions about all of these things. So uh, do your best to answer them honestly. And um, it's okay for you to say, listen, I'm also a little bit worried about this. I'm also a little bit um, unsure about what's going to happen. But this is what I do know. And this is what we as a family can do. Um, to keep ourselves and your nanny and granddad and your aunties and uncles and your friends all safe. So be real and answer their questions um, as well as you can. It's also really important to keep fun alive at this time for our children. So to um, make it relatable to that for them, um, use examples of, of from, from real life, from um, their own family, um, just so that they can relate depending on what, whatever age that they're at. So that's really important. To help with anxiety, routine is essential. In this time of complete uncertainty and um, lack of routine around schooling, around socialising, play dates, visiting grandparents, aunties and uncles, um, there's a lot of changes for the child. And, um, you know, that, that, that can create uh, boredom, it can create uh, downtime, it can create anxiety. So where possible, we want to instill a little bit more routine into the child's life. So if they usually get up at eight o'clock or half seven or half eight um, to start their, their school day during the week, let's try and keep that um, a possibility to keep them um, getting up at the same time where possible and um, having lunch at the usual time no, not being rigid or strict around any of that but just to um, create a little bit of balance and a little bit of um, routine I have a little helper here beside me um, 
Amelie is seven and she's going to talk a little bit about her experience as a child um, with an around anxiety and um, the COVID-19. So Amelie, we're going we're gonna to ask you some questions in, in a few more minutes. Um, so another part of uh, creating a routine is adjusting our expectations around what is normal in, in these times. So usually you probably would have much less screen time for your children and um, you, you may be experiencing some, some guilt and frustration around the fact that children are needing to spend a little bit more time on screens. Um, so let's embrace that because it's just the way it has to be for now for, for a lot of people that um, our, our lives and our worlds are being primarily conducted, the business part of our lives and and, and I mean that in terms of the business of communication, the business of interaction, the business of um, emotional connection. It's all happening now through screens. So it, it's helpful if we embrace that as a temporary measure and embrace that for our children as well and allow them to embrace technology. Um, there's lots of really, really useful tools that children can avail of. Um, using screens. So um, I know Amelie is doing some cosmic yoga through screens, um, the body coach PE lessons. Yeah. Um, she's also doing some Zoom calls yeah. with her classmates. So we're having some virtual play dates and things like that. So while screens, yes, can be the enemy for a lot of parents and children, um, at this time it's useful for us to let go of expectations and restrictions to some extent and bring that into our child's life to create a bit of stability, a bit of normality, and to allow them to continue connecting with friends, with grandparents, and um, with peers, and um, in, in the classroom environment, some, some students are connecting online as well. Um, so I think that's really, really important. It's amazing what can be done uh, virtually these days, and um, part of allowing our children to be children might be to encourage them to do some of the socialising that they would usually do um, online these days. Um, the other part of, of being cr creating a new normal and um, helping our children alleviate anxiety is just encouraging them to play, encouraging them to, to be children, um, answer the questions that they have, but you know, reminding them that, listen, you don't really need to worry about that. Let mom and dad worry about that. This is what the truth is and this is what the facts are. Um, but what I need from you is just to be yourself. And what would you like to do in this moment? What would be fun for you? What would help you? Um, get your kids involved in um, what works for them. If you have a child who's particularly anxious, um, there's really great resources online at the moment around um guided meditations for children, um, listening to calming music, um, breathing, mindfulness practice for children. I mentioned cosmic yoga earlier on. And in my experience and from other parents that I've spoke to, um, children find these things quite fun um, and they use them to, and Emily sometimes you use them to help you sleep, yeah. uh, to put on a little meditation. And it just it can help kind of bring down the, the anxiety levels a little bit. So I might just hand you over to Amelie now. Um, I'm going to ask Amelie some questions and give you some insight and hopefully Amelie will give you some insight into the child's mind um, at this time. So Amelie, you are seven? Yeah. You're seven. And what class are you in? I'm in first class. Okay. So why don't you tell us about um, what you know about the uh, COVID-19 well, I know it's quite serious. I know it can be dangerous, but it doesn't affect our kids that often and that badly, but can affect elderly. Okay. So, what do you do? You hear people talking about it, and what do you think when you hear about COVID nineteen? Sometimes I do. I do hear some people talk about it, and. I don't really like it, but I I listen and I I learn new facts and I just need to t tell myself that it's okay and I know it's serious, but nothing's bad going to happen to me. Do you worry? Yes. What do you worry about? Just people dying and my family being unhealthy. Okay. And how do you feel when you think of those things? 
I just feel sad and angry and anxious. Oh, and what what way do you feel those? I don't know. I just I just feel like that. I just feel angry and sad and just bring back bad brings back bad memories because I used to think that it was all okay, it was gonna be over soon, but then it brings me back to reality when it's gonna take a little while to figure out. And what do you do when you feel sad and angry and anxious? Sometimes I will listen to meditation at night, in the day, anytime. I'd like I would like calm my nanny and granddad and my friends. Oh, so you call your nanny and granddad and friends and how, yeah. and does that help? Yeah. How does it help? Well, I like to talk to them, take them take the COVID nineteen off my mind and just have fun with them. And are you able to have fun with them even though you can't see them? Yeah, we like to talk. Okay. And um tell me what else helps you to not feel worried and anxious or afraid? ASMR. Oh, you like ASMR? It relaxes me. Okay. You watch that online, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And um, do you ever feel overwhelmed? Yes, a lot. Tell me about a time recently when you felt a bit overwhelmed. Well, I was watching the news with mom and I, I heard that we were going on lockdown. It, it made me sad. It made me scared. And overwhelmed, definitely. And what did you do to help you feel better? I talked to my nanny and granddad and I gave, I gave my mom big cuddles. Okay. And you're doing school at home now, aren't you? Yeah. What's that been like? It's fun. Sometimes it can be stressing, but it is fun. Like, And there's this app that I get to see my friends and my teacher on Zoom. Cool. And you, you said it can be stressing. Yes. Why, why is it stressing? Sometimes I don't know what's going on. Sometimes I could miss something. And, like, it's not school, so my teacher's not here to actually explain things. She does it online, so sometimes I can miss things. And it can be stressing, and I'll have to catch up a lot. But I get it done. You get it done. And then... Um, what helps you get it done when you feel like you've got catch-up work to do or you've missed too much? Well, I've got some advice from mom, and it just, she said, just to take one step at a time and just get it started and it will help you and it will get you will get through it all. And if any of you have trouble like this, just ask for help. Just ask your mom, ask your dad for help and just... Remember, just do it one step at a time because you'll get through it by the end of the day. Okay, Emily, that's really great advice. And thank you for sharing your tips on anxiety and stress um, in children um, for, that are seven years of age. <laughs> um, thanks, everybody, for listening. Um, myself and Emily hope you found that uh, useful. And um, have a lovely day.